As promised, it's time for the monthly missions moment to deal with the month of November, and that is the money that came in for missions, went out for missions, and uh, covered the expenses of the conference that we had. Well, we had $6,996 in the month of November that came into our church. That includes the regular support needed of $2,400, but then there was designated giving of $3,489, which includes the offerings that were taken during our missions conference. And our missions conference was, was tremendous. The giving was generous. Uh, the missionaries that we had were from Kenya, two from Kenya, one from going to uh, Japan, and then one going to, uh, or going back to Uganda. Um, and it's a great time. I enjoyed our missionaries immensely. That leaves us with a surplus of $1,100, $1,107 to be exact, for the month of November. That's just the month of November. And, uh, and that will cover the expense of our missions conference itself, to put it on, um, the food, the deliveries, and all that were needed to accommodate for our uh, missionaries. So, um, so that surplus will be allocated to those purposes. So it was a great month, missions oriented. It was a, a phenomenal month, and it was a great opportunity for our hearts to be uh, knit once again to missions as it ought to be, as it ought to be our priority of our church. First of our missionaries in focus will be Hope Children's Home in Tampa. Well, I know that you're very familiar uh, with Hope Children's Home. It's been uh, part of our support for many, many, many years. Uh, Hope is a tremendous outreach to the young people, the youth of uh, our community and abroad. They always will bring in uh, their letters a particular child who has had their life touched. And in this l recent letter that they have, they speak of uh, Desi, a 17-year-old that uh, was from, uh, from Bulgaria. And uh, Desi was not, uh, was not wanted. She was the last of, she was the 10th child of a gypsy family and unwanted. And she was put into orphan care. And, uh, and from there went from orphanage to orphanage to orphanage to orphanage, ultimately, finally, her, finding her way to the United States and then into the care of, uh, of Hope Children's Home. And uh, it wasn't too long before she realized this was her permanent destination, which she was not aware of when she was in Bulgaria. And so, um, but they go on to talk about what the woman of God is that she has become. And uh, the Hope Children's Home has been tremendously used by God. So, opportunity alert, somebody, a friend of the ministry of Hope Children's Home, has donated a $30,000 match fund. That means if we'll, if people will give $10,000, they'll give $10,000. If they'll give $20,000, the match fund will give $20,000. So this is a great opportunity to give to Hope Children's Home and have your giving doubled. So I encourage you to support this great ministry. They're doing a phenomenal job uh, providing an opportunity where there is not opportunity for orphanages, for orphans in America and abroad. So pray for Hope Children's Home. It's a tremendous reach, outreach, and it needs to stay around. So if you can give towards this opportunity for a matching fund, do so. Ed and Barbara O'Brien, the Lord has called them to reach Hispanic people in the United States of America, and they are currently serving in North Carolina. It's their desire to plant churches in the United States. Previously, they served in Mexico, and they account for that in their most recent letter about uh, how it is going there on the work there in Mexico. It's been turned over to a national pastor, and it's worth noting that um, it has gone on to greater heights. This, this national pastor that they speak of here has uh, suffered the loss of a daughter, a heart attack. This was all just back to back, and yet the work has been uh, opened up and in great power. They had 129 uh, adults and uh, in their services, and then they, have, so they speak of the teens and the children that are in attendance at their, at their uh, Awana clubs, 25 of them. Um, so it's tremendously effective ministry there that continues on there as the national pastor has taken over the work. So pray for Ed and Barbara O'Brien as they continue the work of the Lord in North Carolina, reaching Hispanic people for Jesus. Jed and Gloria Duarte serving in Brazil. And Brother Duarte was here at our church and uh, just a super likable guy. Uh, he went out and played with volleyball with uh, young adults and teens and just hit it off tremendously well. 
at a missions conference, not last missions, but prior, prior to that. In his recent letter, um, before the one I count for now, is uh, he had spoken about an outreach that he was trying to open up where it was athletic-based in reaching some of the young people in the community because the church had been so, um, so closed and uh, restrictions were, were of a high, high order. And uh, he prayed for an opportunity there that the, Lord, that the Lord would open up doors. Well, he accounts for that in this letter, that those doors were open, and he gives an account of several people who trusted Christ as their personal Savior as a result of that outreach. And it was uh, athletic-based, and yet um, he was able to lead a couple of young men to the Lord, and then they went on and uh, we're able to take them to an additional few more people and there were more people that were saved so the letter is exciting to see that the gospel can go out in different venues sometimes we just have to be creative and when one opportunity closes down another opportunity is available and uh, and there's growth that's going on in the individual's life and uh, and so he's praying lord would give him greater opportunity yet still in all of these restrictions that he has to work with uh, in brazil concerning COVID. so com pray for the Duarte family, that this outreach that he has opened up would continue with greater blessings still. Andy and Lisa Simpson serve in the country of Taiwan, and uh, they account for their, in their la last letter, they account for many of the different outreaches that they held throughout the summertime. And uh, these, this young couple uh, has really been diligent about, uh, about their work. And they talk about VBS and the 4,000 flyers that were passed out and canvassed out. And the number of children that attended were somewhere in the neighborhood of 40 children. They even had a couple of professions of faith uh, that went on to show some growth in their Christianity as well. So their VBS was incredibly successful. And then First Baptist Church of Dolly uh, held their summer outreach in the local park. And, uh, and it was also incredibly effective with uh, many, many numbers of children in attendance. It's, it's interesting, they do a drama presentation, uh, and then they even have use of puppets and so forth, and it, it attracts a crowd, it attracts a listening audience. They give the gospel there, uh, and, uh, and people, again, are saved as a result of that. And from that, they even speak of a mother and a son who attended the Sunday services and, uh, and, and have now gone on to grow uh, more faithful in church. Um, in the fall, they account for some of the progress and that basically they're praying that God would open up more opportunities for growth in their teens, in the juniors program as well, uh, that it would grow. And they, they, they speak of a little bit of a struggle there right now in the personal growth pattern of, uh, or, or numerical growth of the, of the youth. Now, the thing that really attracts my attention is what they, what they title as saber rattling. And what they're referring to is China's uh, rhetoric about taking action to incorporate Taiwan uh, back into uh, the mainland of China. And, uh, and that's a serious matter, and it needs our prayer because their life will be in danger should that happen. Uh, they say that the people of Taiwan are not very responsive to it at all. They seem to think that it's just a lot of uh, chatter. Uh, but do be in prayer. It's a, it's a side note, but do be in prayer that the Lord would keep our missionaries, the Simpsons, Andy and Lisa Simpson, safe uh, from harm as it relates to this saber rattling. So pray for the Simpsons and their outreach their, and their protection. Andy and Connie Ritchie's kind of our own. They're uh, children of Robert and Cheryl Ritchie. Uh, Brother Ritchie's a uh, deacon in our church. And um, Brother, Brother Andy and Miss Connie serve in Kenya, Africa. They've recently gone through a difficult personal situation in the loss of their grandchild. Prematurely born, little Andre didn't last very long. We prayed that the Lord would preserve his life. However, the Lord saw fit to take him home. And uh, I know that's left their hearts very heavy but they've continued to serve. In their September letter, they account for the new church work, which is Lighthouse Baptist Church in Kamakis, Kenya. The Lord has blessed in a tremendous way. It opened up uh, on September 6th, and they've been averaging 22 in their Sunday morning attendance. That's a, that's a basic average um, throughout the months now. And uh, beyond that, he talks of a young man that he led to the Lord. I mean, these are, Connie and, uh, and Andy both are tremendous, voracious soul winners. Connie, uh, or excuse me, uh, Brother Andy led a young man to the Lord. And, uh, and in, upon trusting the Christ as a Savior, 
brother Andy started discipling him. That young man has become his faithful um, interpreter. Wherever brother uh, Andy ends up preaching, he takes his interpreter with him. He's passionate and he's expressed his desire to see other people saved and he is voracious soul winner as, as Andy. Connie was recently out and she spoke of a young lady that she was able to lead to the, to the Lord named Rachel. Rachel, upon receiving Christ as her savior, began to grow in her faith. When COVID-19 started or, or kicked in effect over in Kenya, the schools were closed, but Rachel wanted her daughter to receive an education. Connie volunteered. What do you think she taught her of first? You know, she taught her of her need to be saved. And so Rachel's daughter trusted Christ as her personal savior. So while, uh, while Miss Connie uh, taught her other things, she taught her the most important thing, and that is the need of salvation. Rachel recently in discipleship expressed her need to be biblically baptized, and so she was baptized and became one of the first members of the new Lighthouse Baptist Church in Kamakas, Kenya. Connie and Andy Ritchie are doing a great job. Pray for them, pray for their protection, and pray for their preservation, their health, that, uh, and that they would be continually effective in getting the gospel out and seeing churches planted in the nation of Kenya. Thank God for Connie and Andy Ritchie both. What a blessing they are. That's the monthly missions moment for the month of November. It was a great month. It was an exciting month to get missions back as a central priority in our minds as we did our missions conference. Now keep in mind, in the month of March, we will do another missions conference, which will be on greater scale. So uh, looking forward to that, we have our missionaries getting lined out already, and we're super excited about God working in our church in the area of missions. I have much to say about some of the future plans with missions, but that's not for now. Thank you so much for joining me in this monthly missions moment. We'll see you back next month.